All right, welcome back. Today, we're gonna do position based movement on C sharp. So, last time we left off, we had our main character, which had our input, and I decided to add this private in speed, and we left off at this code. Now, for uh, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna do a WASD movement and I don't want that to affect our camera so when we go to the camera we tick off the controls so WASD does not uh, get affected by our main player now for the main character you have no idea what you're looking at so we're just gonna press a create a primitive box one by one I'm just gonna press click it wherever the heavens you want and then what you do is you uh, hold, click and hold it uh, make it a child of the main character and then make its position 0 0 and 0 and that's gonna give it a proper positioning uh, zero to its uh, origin onto the main character and for the main character I just mo moved it to a 0.5 so the box is actually up on the scale so now we're gonna start coding a bit I'm gonna remove this just uh, mute it uh, just use two forward slashes and I'm gonna write a WASD command for is key pressed all right so now that we have everything connected what we're gonna do now is we're gonna move through translation based or position based the beauty of this is precision so if you had to move at a specific step or amount this is the perfect way of movement for you if you had to move through realism or have to add physics and controllers and all that then this is not really the most optimal way but it's not too bad for that physics is much better for that so for this movement we're gonna say as long as I press W I want to move forward so how do we do that first let's reference the main controller and the main controller is the node itself since we connected it to main character it's referencing the main character so now we can just press node with small letters and that's the component that we're connected to and we press dot we have a few functions and the one that we want is world position and now it's a setter getter type world position so we make it equal to a vector 3 so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the same world position and then we add a difference now what we add is a direction so inside Unigen every direction has um, a point and every object forward is considered positive Y back is considered negative Y left right is X and a negative x and then up down is z and negative z so in our case we're going to do node.get world direction so we get the world's direction and we move it along that so inside the bracket if we look into it it gives us a default value of negative z is not what we want so we just go mathlib.axis.y and that gives us a point but we're not done yet because this is an update function let me zoom it up this is an update function now an update function this runs every time 60 times per second precisely so how do we negate that what we do is we times it by game dot ifps which is the inverse frames and thus it's only running in a fixed amount now this is going to be really slow or this is where you add your own code in our case we have in speed so now we can multiply it by a certain factor and now we can multiply it by speed and that's the basics of movement so this is node world position which equals to the original position plus the direction times it by the inverse since we're doing an update is going to stop by a specific amount and then times it by the speed and that's going to give us a proper speed movement and you can adjust the speed which will uh, make it as fast as slow so in our case now we have s which is negative y and then for a it's negative x and for d it's 
X and that should be enough and let's just press play right after it re, re imports and then plays and now we have this object let's check it out press W and it's moving forward back right and left okay so it's doing exactly what we wanted but we want it to rotate as I press right and left let's say you didn't want that then your controller is done but I want to go a little bit above and beyond and instead of making it uh, go left and right I want it to rotate left and right so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do node world rotate and we're gonna add a quaternion into it so what we add is um, a quaternion quaternion dot and we have the ability to add a few elements now if we add a new quaternion every frame it's just gonna destroy our RAM so what we do here is we write private quaternion uh, left and right and then in void init which is our initiation function we're gonna define these so left equals to new quaternion and then we're gonna use one of its overloads and this one is the easiest one which allows us to rotate at a specific angle now if you know your angles rotation along an angle means if we have a stick going through that let's say for Z we have a stick going through up and down we rotate that stick so in our case uh, rotating along Z axis means looking left and right if we rotate along Y axis we're tilting around and if we're X we're moving up and down and if you guys already know your yaw pitch and uh, row then this is a little bit easy for you but for other people the easiest way to do it is just press zero zero and for this I guess it's minus one and right equals to new quaternion zero comma zero comma one so if anyone is confused just start rotating along one axis and you will understand what it does so if I rotate along that, it moves in that position. If I rotate along this, it moves in that position. And just play around and you'll understand that much. Now, um, let's just take left, since we're doing left, and put it in left. And then, let's just copy this, paste it here, and then instead of left, let's make it a right. Now, this saves us memory. And since we have automatic garbage collection, if this is never referenced after a while, let's say we deleted this whole program, then it's going to get deleted automatically. Now, let's press play and see what happens. Alright, so as we move forward and backwards, it looks good. Let's move left. Oh, it was reversed. So it moves right and moves the other way. So, it perfectly moves exactly how we want it, except... I guess for right it's minus one and for left it's negative one the other way around and let's do it again let's do it and left moves right and it's perfectly moving exactly how we want it to be so that's the basics of movement through translation now if you wanted to move a specific step then you change it from is key press to is key down and make it a specific amount every time and that would make it like a grid based movement but for now this is our basic controller using translations its beauty is in precision but its mistake is that if you had a terrain that has too many movements or like too many bumps you have to write a little extra code to fix that but for basics simplicity i guess that's it and next episode we're gonna do physics based and see the differences with that but for now i think we're done and yeah see you next time guys